How was the drive over? We went through a few storms, but we made it. Jennifer and Emma run a rescue in Kansas. They picked up a dog that got hit by a car and drove all night to bring Dakota to us. He's kind of in an emergency state. Come here. It's OK. It's OK. They've called us because there's nobody in their area that can do the surgery. He's pretty broke up. Does he use the back legs at all? He tries to stand, but he just flops back there. Oh, he's super sweet. I'm going to take him back to Petra right away. He's in bad shape. You are beautiful. On Saturday night, I happened to see a little dog that had got hit by a car. We took him to our vet, got him on supportive care, and got him stabilized. Took him to our vet, said both legs are broken, and they're like euthanizing. Or, you know, we'll save one leg, and then, you know, it'll be $2,700 to $3,700. And as a rescue, you just don't have that kind of money. He is a trooper. I mean, this poor guy, for all he has been through, has been, like, friendly and licky and just, like, happy. I'm feeling happy. You know, knowing that he is finally able to get the care that he's going to need. Going to x-ray right now to assess the damage. It is a lot worse than we were hoping for. He seems to have functioned in his back legs. One of them shattered into pieces. His spine, based on the x-ray, looks intact. So it looks like neurologically he got lucky. But we'll do what we can, worst case scenario. We might have to amputate one of the legs in the future if it doesn't heal, but I'm hoping we won't need to. We need to shave both legs. Mm -hmm. Dr. Andreas is our vet from Mexico, and he's here for a few weeks just to learn some new stuff, mostly bone surgeries. Jeff is a good friend, Petra is a good friend, and they give me the chance to train here. That's good. We have doctors come and train from all over the world all the time. A lot of doctors like to do orthopedic surgeries, but it's really hard to learn those if you have nobody to guide you or nobody to observe to start with. Dakota, unfortunately, has both hind legs broken. Now, on his left leg, the femur is broken pretty bad. It has multiple pieces. So for that one, we're going to place an external fixator. An X-Fix is very much like a metal contraption on the outside of the leg with metal pins going on the inside of the ball. On the right leg, the femur is broken right here. It's called a distal femur fracture. So I'm going to put two metal pins in there going all the way into the bone. I'm really hoping that we can put them back together, given that it's as bad as it is. She was been in a cage for about three years. Our front paws were real fat from sitting there. Her, her butt was covered in leather. And when we got her, she had no hair. Yeah, she just looked like a little hippo. <laughs> she was bald. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You're always cute. I mean, it makes us sad to think about what she's been through. And that's what's more fun to give her love now, because I mean, man, the more love, the better. My wife gets jealous. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Good yourself? Yeah, good. Dr. Don. Very nice to meet you. Pleasure. Nice to meet you too. Well, so what are you noticing? What's she doing at home that she lumps pretty bad? Yeah. And she has been fixed, yeah, after coming out of the yeah. mill? Yeah. All right, so I just want to do a quick little exam. And she could be, be tight from sitting for so many years. Yeah, but I mean she she's not gets gonna worse. develop quite normally. Yeah. There's just yeah. no getting yeah. around it. We don't for sure know yet if it's gonna be hips or if it's gonna be knees until we get x-rays. And with those, we'll be able to kind of plan for what we need to do. Great. We don't want her to be in pain. I'm glad she found you guys. She's, she's getting awesome. Much better care oh, than she's I think. so much fun. Good. Yeah. All right, well, let's take her back. Um, we'll get her set up for those x-rays. And then we'll be in touch a little bit later on today. Sounds wonderful. Perfect. Be good hands there, Peppy. What do you think? You ready? All right, let's go. Come on. All right, take care. We'll be in touch later on, OK? Thank you so much. No problem. We're going to need to anesthetize her to get these x-rays. Keeping a dog in a kennel 24-7 does not do good things for their body. Some of these dogs um, have never been outside, um, never touched grass, and she's not really able to move around the way that she should, so she can't stretch her muscles. 
you get kind of mental problems, you get emotional problems with these pets, um, not to mention the physical problems of just constantly having babies. It has really dramatic consequences. Both hips have these abnormal femoral heads, which is consistent with hip dysplasia. You know, that could be because of um, how she was kept. And you can see the knees too. You've got this just patchy, hazy, moth-eaten sort of appearance. And that's arthritis. So basically she's got the joints of like a, you know, 15-year-old dog, 10 years early. I can feel that she's got a torn anterior cruciate ligament in this right knee, and I know this is gonna be very painful. So I would start there, and if that improves everything, great. If we need to revisit the, the hip and do surgery there, then we certainly can, but I think ACL is where we'd start. Pepper is from a puppet mill, so she's been bred for the last three years. She's been in a cage, and that's left her with a ton of orthopedic problems. We think the most important problem right now is going to be her ACL, and so that's what we're going to fix today. The ACL is this ligament inside the knee, and when it's torn, we get this back and forth sliding motion that should not be there. We're going to place a band um, around the knee in a figure eight, and that will prevent the bones from sliding. So it'll keep them locked in place to allow everything to heal. Without this surgery, Pepper's just gonna be in chronic pain. She's gonna want to mentally go out and play and run and do all this dog stuff with her new life, but she just won't be able to do that comfortably. And hopefully we'll be able to give her a good usable leg and let her go out and kind of live the life that she wants to. Before coming here about five years ago, I'd never done an ACL surgery, and I watched Jeff do a bunch, I trained with Jeff and Petra, and now I've done hundreds. So we're in the joint now. We are going in to remove the pieces of the torn ligament, the torn ACL. Over time, her wear and tear on the ACL is just accumulated enough to, to break. So she probably had this for, you know, months or years at the mill, and this is the first time she's really getting it addressed. Okay. So the ACL was actually completely gone. We've flushed everything out, so you've got a nice clean surface now for the body to, to move on. And we're gonna close up the joint capsule and then we'll put the band after that. Perfect. Let's check it out. Good. We get a bend to 90 degrees and no instabilities. <clears throat> All right. Sarah and Dan Piano have been caring for abandoned huskies for the past four years. Good to see you. Good to see you again. <laughs> Look at this. Look around. Look at the mountains. I mean. This is pretty cool. Great to see what you. What happened to you? Oh, I had to have a surgery. Shoulder surgery? Yeah. I've been trying to be good about it, but it's yeah. really hard. Having the shoulder surgery has put us a little behind schedule to start the season. It's a two-person job. Dr. Jeff is here to examine Hector, the family's border collie, and their rescued huskies. They're really naughty. <laughs> I think she's got a fractured molar, Jeff. Everything starts and stops with nutrition. If they can't eat well because they're in pain, they can't perform, and that affects everything. We count on these guys as much as they count on us. Oh, yeah, that's not good there. You gotta work for a living up here. I'm talking about labor. And, you know, they're grinding away, but the money is a reality. When that there is pretty bad, good boy. By being able to help them with veterinary services, we're able to keep their business afloat. Without that, you know, they'd be stuck with probably a two or three thousand dollar bill with any other regular bit. Oh yeah, he totally gets some good session on that. Oh, side. Yeah. We'll try to figure it out. Okay. They're trying to do a business in an ethical manner. They're using rescue dogs, and they find really good homes for the ones as they retire them. So I hope we can make some difference in a couple of these dogs. Let's get to work. We got to get everything unloaded. The team sets up their mobile surgery in Sarah and Dan's office. I love it. 
It is a challenge to do surgeries inside somebody's house. We're missing an x-ray, we don't have all of our equipment, so we have to improvise a lot. As long as it works, I'm happy with it. You go, boy, Hecky. Dr. Jeff's first patient also happens to be named Hector. Hecky, come back! Hector is having a knee, maybe some hip issues. He's going to do an exam on him. Hector! Huh? Which Hector? Oh. <laughs> Oh, I was like, yeah, I'm used to getting screamed at like, Hector! <laughs> Where's Hector at? You're all right. The biggest challenge today is probably going to be figuring out what's going on with Hector, because he's walking around really funny, so we're going to figure out if it's a hip problem or a knee problem. Right, right hind? Uh, yeah. I feel for him. solid as a rock. That's not moving at all. That's good. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. The patella's right here, and it's not swollen there. His hip's not popping out. I'm just not feeling anything in his knee joints or his hip joints. Yep. All right, let's wake him up. Yeah. All right. So you think he's all good? Yeah. I'm willing to bet if he's been a real runner and jumper that he may have a little spondylosis, which is kind of bridging of the spine. It takes an And there's nothing you can do about that in all honesty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what I would do is get a buffered aspirin. You know, 300, 325 milligrams, and he's having a bad day or a bad evening, yeah. stuff one down him. On that one? Yeah, this one's his. I'm right, relieved well. to hear that his knees are sound, and it's probably just some pain we can manage for him with some low-dose aspirin. With Hector's problem solved, Bonnie, come. the team focuses on cleaning or pulling some bad teeth. So you're just scraping the plaque and tartar off, basically? Yeah, and pretty much the same thing they do with humans, you know? Dental issue is important for everything, for dogs, for cats, for humans. As the teeth get infected, the bacteria is shed in the blood, and it goes to the liver, heart, kidneys, lungs. And that's how you end up with heart disease, kidney disease. So there's just nothing good that happens with bad teeth. <laughs> OK, buddy. After a lot of cleaning and 12 extractions, oh, wow, that's a good one. the Huskies are ready for the season. I think they take real good care of their animals, and they get to do what they were bred to do. In the winter, tourists can pay to come mushing here, which helps Sarah and Dan keep up with the cost of running their husky rescue. Jeff did a lot of work that, honestly, probably wouldn't have got done this fall. Come on, Ula! Ready? Yep. Let's get going. Don't go! <laughs> <laughs> good morning, beautiful! Look at you today! Doors and biscuit. These two ladies had parvo. It is a terrible disease. Doris was so, so sick. She had just given birth to 11 babies, 10 of which didn't make it. Um, this is the only one that's still hanging on. In Doris's case, she's only 11 months old. They're breeding her intentionally. When we said that we would spay her, they weren't interested in having her bat, and that's why she now, it belongs to us to, to get all better and, and rehome. We've been having a really hard time getting this baby to eat. She just weighs 16 pounds, and she should weigh at least 25 pounds. She's been on IVs and getting fluids, but looks like she's feeling better because she's eating baby food right now. Wow. Very impressive. First time ever. First time ever eating the whole jar. This is milder, and it's the only thing we can get her to eat. We have tried, oh my gosh, probably upwards of 11 things. Look, the baby's going to take care of the lid. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Biscuit needs to be eight weeks before we can adopt. That way, we'll have spay taken care of, the first round of vaccines done. In this baby, Doris's case, we want to make sure that she's regularly eating, like a normal, healthy dog would. Oh my goodness, you're doing great. You guys are so darn cute. 